In this video, we're going to talk about some new technological breakthroughs that could be pushing us towards making real progress on the clean energy transition. But for some reason, not that many people are talking about them. Let's discuss. When people talk about the energy transition from fossil fuels to clean energy, usually they end up talking about wind and solar power which is fine, but these are intermittent sources. They have quite a big land footprint. There are good arguments why they should be part of the energy mix and equally good ones why you shouldn't over rely on them. That's an engineering observation that for some reason seems to be controversial in some quarters, but whatever. So then they talk about nuclear power, which is fine. It's always on power and a much lower land footprint, and fourth generation nuclear promises to be better in lots of ways from the older tech. But it's hugely costly, it's slow to build, controversial to all of those who are asked to live next door to it, so even those governments that have been talking it up in theory, such as the UK over the last five years, have been slow to do much about it in practice. Then they talk about nuclear fusion, which is fine, but you could also talk about clean energy emitting unicorns for all the actual real-world progress you can point to. When they talk about innovation for new energy sources, what people rarely quickly move to is geothermal energy. Geothermal energy, simply put, is where you dig an extremely deep hole in the ground in order to get to the heat that's stored beneath the Earth's surface. This is primordial heat from the original formation of the Earth. It takes quite a long time for a planet to cool, so there's still a huge quantity of hot plasma beneath the Earth's crust. It occasionally comes up to say hello, not in a way that we find especially useful. If you go all the way down to the Earth's core, you would find the temperature there to be somewhere between five to 7,000 degrees Celsius. Luckily, you don't need to go that far down to get useful energy. Just a few kilometres down will do. It will give you temperatures capable of driving an energy turbine anyway. How far you have to go down depends rather on where on the planet you are located. But the total energy reserves in the top 10 kilometres would provide enough energy for all human needs across the entire planet for several hundred million years. That being the case, you might wonder why does it currently hardly ever show up as anything more than a minor blip in the energy mix for most countries. In 2022, the installed geothermal energy capacity was just about 15 gigawatts, which is nothing. 0.2% of energy use worldwide. Only Iceland, which has geothermal heat much closer to hand than most countries, manages a substantial proportion of its supply coming from that source, around 66%. And that's the key. Iceland has the good fortune to have geothermal resources very close to the surface. In most of the world, you have to drill. Drilling a hole that is a few kilometres long not quite as simple as it sounds, and therefore the cost of doing that is the biggest drag on geothermal deployment. The existing plants tend to be in the locations where you don't have to dig too far down to get going, and the tech has remained pretty static for quite some time. People who are seriously into drilling, well, they end up drilling for oil or for gas, and there didn't seem to be much incentive to innovate for this relative backwater technology. As you might expect, that is starting to change. And as you really should expect, as soon as people really start to focus in on an area, they find ways to make it better, quicker and cheaper. So it seems we're about to see in this area. One innovator that has been announcing a potential breakthrough is Quay's Energy, which is a spin-off company from MIT, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Their big moment is coming from a new type of drill, which uses microwaves called gyrotrons. Gyrotrons, I know, sounds very science fiction and much more interesting than just a better way to dig a hole in the ground. 
Ironically, gyrotons have only been used a lot in nuclear fusion experiments, for all that I was being rude about them just a moment ago. But I digress. The gyrotron drills work by vaporising rock using high-power linear beam vacuum tubes that generate electromagnetic waves. Quaze has attracted $95 million in investment to develop its technology to be able to drill 20 kilometres into the Earth's crust, which is over 12 miles for those of us still using old money. Which sounds like a lot, and it is. It would be de facto the deepest hole in the ground that humanity had ever made. And if you could make it commercially viable, you've just opened up something like 90% of all locations across the world where you could site a geothermal plant. Before that, the deepest hole that we dug, I say we, I can't claim I pulled my weight with this, was 12 kilometres down in Siberia. That impressive distance was achieved after 20 years of drilling. The deeper it got, the slower the dig became, finally stopping altogether, meaning that work was abandoned in 1992. Conventional drills are just not up to the high temperatures and pressures that deep. Paul Waskov, the MIT researcher whose work led to the founding of the company, told IEEE Spectrum, It was evident that if we could get it to work, we could drill very deep holes for a very small fraction of what it costs now. Well, like me, you probably noticed an important if in that sentence. But the news is that trials are going well. Based on Waskov's experiments, he calculates the digging could be done at a rate of 20 metres per hour, which would give you the world's deepest hole after just 26 days of digging. Which you can imagine is definitely cheaper than 20 years digging and then giving up. By autumn this year, fall if you're American, Quays will be field testing its pilot geothermal site in Marble Falls, Texas. The principle for why it's cheaper is that if you're truly vaporising the rock, its removal from the drilling hole is easily accomplished compared to most other mechanisms for drilling. You're injecting gas to bring the vaporised product to the surface rather than pumping out sludge. Not only does this potentially mean you can build new geothermal plants at lower cost, but it would also likely mean you could revitalise existing power plants, such as those formerly fuelled by fossil fuels, to make use of their turbine and their energy connectivity to the grid to give them a new lease of life. Now, not everyone is convinced. Once you get that deep into the ground, so you're getting to super critical temperatures, that brings in technical problems beyond the mechanics of drilling. So far, the history is supercritical wells have not survived to become productive. Quays is not the only innovator, however. There's also Canopus, developing steel shot drilling technology, which aims to drill long horizontal sidetrack wells, which can theoretically increase production while bringing down costs. There's also Anchor Bits deep drilling tool, which improves the drilling technology through hard and abrasive formations, potentially doubling drilling speeds. And then enhanced geothermal systems pilot demonstrations that look at injecting water into sites rather than seeking naturally occurring hot water reservoirs. Fervo Energy is developing that technology in Utah, where they already have a highly promising test site. The fact that all this innovation is kicking off is definitely a positive sign. For all that I can see, there are going to be problems and issues still to be overcome. It does feel to me that they are eminently more quickly solvable than many of the hurdles in front of a transition agenda in other fields. Right now, geothermal is perhaps the one source of clean energy that has escaped being overly politicised, which also helps. Broadly speaking, people on the left of politics and people on the right can still get behind it. Neither are evangelical about it, and that probably helps, ironically. If he can stay that way, then maybe we will have more breakthroughs over the next handful of years that have the potential to truly revolutionise how we talk about the energy problems of the future. 
something to watch out for I thought you'd be interested to hear about.